Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Q&A for the Flute as Sound Medicine. Learn to play simple tunes for self-expression, transformation, and healing. I'm Carrie Hernandez with the Shift Network, and it is my pleasure to be your host as we explore the teachings of Christine Stevens and address questions about her upcoming course, which begins on Tuesday, July 14th at 1 p.m. Pacific. If you're unable to join us live, you can still participate in this course, and I'm going to explain more about that later. But first, I want to introduce my guest. Christine Stevens is an internationally acclaimed speaker, author, drummer, and music therapist, holding master's degrees in both social work and music therapy. She inspires people all over the world with her message that music promotes holistic health, spirituality and wellness. Christine is beloved faculty here at the Shift Network and author of Music Medicine, The Healing Drum Kit and The Art and Heart of Drum Circles book and DVD. Christine is the founder of Upbeat Drum Circles offering training programs and online courses around the world, having led workshops in more than 20 countries, including Iraq, Hong Kong and Brazil. Please join me in welcoming Christine as she leads us in an opening practice. Christine, it's great to have you with us. Welcome. Thank you so much, Carrie, and thank you everybody in the Facebook Live world that is ready for a little sound healing today. Um, I thought I would begin, I'm going to be playing the High Spirits Key of A Sparrowhawk Aromatic Cedar Flute. One thing you'll discover in the field of Native American flutes is we are interested in the key and the wood that creates the flute dynamics. So we'll talk more about that today, but I just want to invite everybody to take a deep healing, cleansing breath right now. Put your hand on your heart. <sighs> The timing of this call is perfect. We're in a global pandemic. There's a lot of challenges in the world today. We want to keep maintaining our musical instrument. We want to tune ourselves like the flute. The holes are where the sound comes through. So we honor and embrace all the emotion that is held in the barrel of the human instrument. We take a breath. And I wanted to do a practice of demonstrating the sound of flute without rhythm, going into rhythm and coming back. And this is a basic thing we'll be learning in the course, the ABA form, which is a hero's journey. Like we begin somewhere, we go somewhere and we come back changed, right? So in this moment with a breath, I want you to imagine that your heart has ears and allow, even if tears come or laughter comes, whatever is stimulated by the music today. Take a moment to bless my flute and put this intention for healing in the flute. Healing defined as wholeness, being of sound body, mind, and spirit. Bringing back into our lives what's missing. Sometimes that's slowing down. Sometimes that's breathing deeply. And a lot of times that's music.
Thank you so much, Christine. We are offering a 20%, uh, or excuse me, a $20 coupon uh, for Sparrowhawk Flute by High Spirits toward the purchase of a flute. Ta da! as well as that there will be resources around making uh, one's own flute. So I would love for you to expand on this topic for us. Sure. Um, so it's interesting when you start to get into the world of flutes, this idea goes back, we know historically, probably the oldest instrument we found 34,000 years ago, and it was made from the bone of a bird. Interestingly enough, and I was recently at the Phoenix Museum of Instruments, the spacing between those holes in that bird bone flute are the same as today. So that tells us that there's this very ancient concept of this scale, this tonality. There's two factors that go into choosing a flute. How your fingers fit on the flute is number one. And I, I'll tell you something, I've been gifted incredible flutes in my life in my travels that I couldn't play because they simply were too long for my hands. So I am recommending the Key of A aromatic uh, cedar, made out of cedar wood, aromatic cedar. So basically you want to consider the, the key of the flute, the whether your hands fit the spacing, because you want your fingers to lay flat. You're not playing like this. You're laying your hands over the pads of the fingers, over the holes. So I recommend the key of A for two reasons. It fits most people's hands really well. And secondly, I find that I play, when I play this flute to nature, it matches, it's incredible. It's the key of the crow. It's the key of the chickadee. There's just some interesting things that have been happening with this key in the world of nature. Um, and it's a very affordable price and I, I like beginning people on this flute. I will warn you that once you get started, when you think about it, there's gonna be 12 possible keys, 12 chromatic notes in the scale. You could also find other flutes that you fall in love with. So just be warned. Um, so the benefit of this flute is the sturdiness of the wood, the ease of getting a good sound on it. And also there is something very interesting going on here. What is this about? Well, there is six holes, but one is covered. I like to say that you're married to your flute. Your third finger stays on this hole because you're actually using a five note scale. Why? I like to call it the star scale. Why? Because actually there are five notes with no wrong notes. So when you hear the scale, lot of songs in that tonality. So we're covering this hole so that we don't have to worry about making a wrong note. We, in advanced playing, you don't need to have that strap there, but it helps you remember to cover it. One of them is in terms of effectiveness, um, how is a regular flute different from a pocket flute? And can you talk about, is there a preferred size for a beginner? I happen to feel like we might talk about this today. So I have my pocket flute right here. It's about the third of the size of the key of A flute. It's a, an octave higher. Octave simply means one range higher. So the benefit of the, the pocket flute is just gonna be size, you know, carrying it. This pocket flute is carved with five holes. Doesn't need to be covered. This is a great way to begin. You want, if you want to hear it, I'll play you. Um, I'll play a little pocket flute and then I'll play a little Sparrowhawk flute. That'll be great. Now, Sparrowhawk is a name given to the flute by Borg Odell, the founder of High Spirits Flutes. They're our instrument partner for this course. I have known him for over a decade when I teach in Japan for the um, Healing Flute Circles program uh, with Jackie Yamauchi. I always take these flutes from high spirits and those are the ones that are really popular in Japan because the shakuhachi flute is a lot harder to play. So why don't we all take a breath 
<sighs> place your consciousness in your heart and listen to a comparison of these two tonalities. Pocket flute first, higher pitched. And now one octave lower. So one benefit to the pocket flute is the convenience of me being able to have it in my backpack when I'm hiking, but also I lead a lot of drum circles. This sound, the tonality, the timbre, and the pitch cuts over the drum. So it has a nice advantage in leading a beat. If I'm leading a drum circle, I can go one, two, repeat after me. <laughs> Hope that answers your question. <laughs> you want to have a flute and play with you right now oh my gosh <laughs> it's wonderful thank you for demonstrating the difference and the sound and the octave between those very helpful indeed you know um ba is asking how does one allow the music to flow without judging that it's not good enough hmm such an important question um so I'll take a moment to just explain in the brain science what Dr. Charles Limbs found when he looked at PET uh, fMRIs, functional MRIs of the brains of jazz musicians. When we improvise, we turn off the brain area dedicated to self-judgment and self-monitoring. We want to turn that off by improvisation. I just played for you in the moment. I didn't prepare what I was going to play for you. Right? So there's two main ways. This course is going to follow the path of learning by ear, playing by heart. We are going to learn some tunes, but we're not going to worry about how do I read music as much as we're going to be focusing on how do you bring forth the song in you, right? But we want to learn songs in order to develop those skills so that we have a wider vocabulary. I like to think of it like painting. You know, you can paint with three colors, you can paint with 20 colors. And the wildflowers have come from a field of many notes. So the learning really helps develop you. Um, and the other thing is being in the moment and having a creative prompt. So for me, I might play along with a drum beat or an audio track, uh, which is provided in the course. And then that gives us a creative prompt because otherwise we're sort of, sort of sitting there like, what do I play? Um, this is actually a good instrument to get over that self-criticism because when you're playing the flute, you can't be thinking. I mean, if I sat here and thought about each note I was going to play, it would probably sound like this. I mean, it's good to demonstrate the difference. It would be like this. I mean, I'm trying to think before I play and feel how it interrupts the flow. So what if I just flow? So the answer is like everything in life, it takes practice. It helps us to play improvisationally with a creative prompt. It could be nature, it could be a drum beat and to be in the moment. So great question. Oh, I want to say one other thing about that really quick. Sorry, <laughs> just a, a thought came in about this question, which is the other day I was playing back and forth on Zoom with Misty Tomasino, my assistant, and we were experimenting with having an audio track and playing back and forth on Zoom. And what we, what we realized is 
when you're not looking at music, you're you're circuiting, you're recircuiting your brain out of visual into auditory. And we know from the reptilian brain studies that auditory systems are much more ancient in our brain and our human development. It's the visual that tends to get us caught up. So if you close your eyes, you'll be amazed at how much different you can play. Thanks. Good question. All right. So Ali is asking, in your teaching experience, can you give me an idea about how long it typically takes to learn how to play with some comfort and ease? Yeah, great question. The answer is going to depend on a couple things. I find that people who ever had a music lesson before age nine, and I'm talking a lot about the brain today, but we do know from brain science that when children have a music lesson before age nine, it's before the um, critical timing of the brain development around um, music. So if you've had a music lesson or played a piano and hated it, good thing. Thank your parents, call them up and uh, play recorder. And many of us had recorder trauma and recorder lessons, um, but that actually benefits us now learning the flute. And it's funny, but those childhood experiences, they have affected our brains in a positive way. So we have some wiring that's already been laid down. If you're completely new to the mechanics of a breath instrument, as I was, I played the drums, a breath instrument was different for me. Um, you're gonna feel a little more comfortable if you played a saxophone or you played a trumpet, any breath instrument. If you're a singer, you're gonna find, oh, I'm using my breath. Um, the logistics of the hand positions, honestly, are so simple, five notes. So when I picked up the flute, I picked it up very quickly because I had played saxophone. And if you've played the drum, you have the sense of rhythm. So it's gonna depend on what previously you've had and it doesn't matter that you've had no training in music whatsoever if you've been listening to the flute, you will find that you will have a benefit. Um, one thing I think is important is we forget how much we learn by ear. I'm not even trying, but for example, in preparing for this class, I loaded my car with CDs. I still have a CD player in the car with CDs of Native American flute music. And I'm listening to it when I'm driving and I just noticed my playing has improved. So those are all factors. I have taught this instrument to children, seniors. I've taught it in so many countries. I've taught it without music. I've taught it with music. Um, I have never found someone who can't get a sound, okay? Let's just put it that way. <laughs> so I'm sorry that there's not a specific formula to say after eight lessons, you know, I was thinking of the piano guy, in one hour, you can learn three songs. Um, but I would say in an hour, everyone will be able to play the scale. Thank you so much, Christine. You know, and I think you um, answered a bit of our next question from Tricia, who is sharing that she is a 71 year old, never learned to play an instrument. And she also mm -hmm. wants to let us know she's never read music before and wants to ask, would I still have or need to be able to learn from this course? Um, and can you? Give some thoughts on that. Seventy percent of the musicians of the world don't read music, and that's an estimate according to ethnomusicology. You know, the Western European tradition was very focused on reading music. Well, there's advantage of that. You know, it's just like writing down words. We want to be able to notate things. The Native American flute has its own notation. It's a drawing of a flute with the notes covered or open, the holes. You don't even need to know how to do that. In the class, we're gonna be using call and response. So I might play, and people will play back to me. So we'll be doing that. We also often refer to it as five, four, three, two, one, depending on how many fingers are up off the notes. So like this is the fifth note. I mean, the five fingers are down, four fingers down, three, two, one, none. Um, 
I think that there could be no better thing than learning an instrument at your age. I, I often quote Dr. Wayne Dyer who said, don't die with the music in you. I'm always, as a music therapist, looking for instruments that easily help people speak their heart and their soul. Because we all have that music in us. And so I think it's great. I applaud people that are coming to this class at any stage with no experience, shaking, fingers nervous, you know, sweating. Welcome. Come home to the power of playing music. Mm, thank you for the invitation. Now, Margot asks, I have a high spirit key of F flute, and I'm just a beginner. Should I stay with this one to continue to learn during your course? Yes, absolutely. You can translate anything we're doing into any key. <laughs> and um, it's something to be said about people saying I'm a beginner. You know, it's great to be a beginner. There is something to the beginner's mind. And there's just tricks that we learn in this course, in the different notes we can play. And what I'm most really looking forward to is getting in these breakout rooms and having you guys play for each other and just learning from hearing each other. And that's really the way it was always taught. So I was thinking, Carrie, if this at this point, we might wanna have one more little musical sharing of a different flute so people could have a different interesting experience and then I'll take some more questions. How's that? Sounds wonderful. Thank you. Okay. So one of the beautiful um, flutes that I've been carrying now for years is the double D flute. Key of D. D is said to be a happy key. Uh, a scientific study interview musicians and composers, listeners, and found that the key of D had a resonance with joy. So this isn't the key of D, <clears throat> it's a double flute made by Guillermo Martinez, who was in the opt-in call with me. And I wanted to just let you guys experience <clears throat> the key of happiness today on this call that we could actually feel uplifted in the middle of the challenging times we're in. Okay, let's just take a breath and receive the music. Christine Stevens learning about her course, The Flute of Sound Medicine, as you were just hearing in her sharing just now. Uh, her course begins Tuesday, July 14th. And please log on to fluteasoundmedicine.com for all the details and to register. Shall we go to our next question? Yes. Great. All right, our next question is, can you please talk about how sound will play a role in our transformation? Sound is one of the most uh, immediate tools for shifting mind, body, and spirit. And there's another component of this. With the sound comes the breath. And just now, playing for you all, I feel more centered, grounded, and relaxed. And so if those are benefits you're looking for, I made a list of seven benefits I feel happen with the flute ceremony, prayer, meditation, creative expression, music, beauty. And number seven, oh, community. I think it's gonna be exciting to meet our virtual sound community on these Shift Network calls. So how does sound affect our transformation? The more we talk, 
the more we think. The more we experience sound without words. When I'm playing the flute, you're not hearing words. We go into a different aspect of receiving that vibration, receiving that intention. I think of the flute as a transmitting tool. I mean, it's a barrel. It directs the transmission of energy, the alchemy of that breath turned into notes, turned into beauty, turned into music. It will give you a tool to change your frequency, to lift your vibration, to release emotions when there's no words. So that is a tool of why I think sound healing is in general really on the rise is because we're looking for things that are speedy. I mean, this shifts us quickly. I did a focus group test and people playing the drum changed their breathing within four minutes. It just helps us shift gears. You know, we come from a culture, if we look at the archeological evidence of this instrument, we come from people who played the flute. It is everyone's lineage. Thank you. Uh, our next question asks, can you talk about the way the teaching will be different in this course regarding learning to play the flute as a spiritual practice and not as a performance training? Yes. Well, one, one thing that's really true with all my work in the last 30 years, from the beginning, becoming a music therapist, I knew there was something to sound and music that wasn't about being a performer. And I took music therapy, got my master's in music therapy to figure that out. So like, what a different question it is to ask, what are the benefits of playing the flute? If I'm not really here to be a, the next best great flute player, pressure, pressure, right? Performance. No, um, what we want to do is find liberation through musical expression. We want to find an a beautiful component of our own need to communicate who we are into the world and to make those prayers as we did in the opt-in call to put your intentions in the flute and play them. And as a bridge to nature, that's another important benefit I forgot to mention is just, you know, this comes from the birds. This comes from the tradition of upliftment. The branch is about the upward, as Carrie said, the drum is from the base of the tree and the branch is the upward. So we're uplifting as a spiritual practice. And to just affirm that, if I look at world tradition, you have Krishna from the Hindu tradition playing his flute. You have Coco Pelli from the Native American traditions. It's been drawings in cave paintings dating back 200 BC. You have also the monks in Japan, Zen Buddhism, playing the shakuhachi flute. You have the great Tibetan master Nwang playing the bamboo flute, the Bansurai, and he's a monk. So there's a reason that all this mindfulness and instead of being a monk, let's belong to the order of music, you know, the divine order of music. So what does spiritual practice really mean? It means union, communion, it means connecting with spirit within and without. It means offering our song as an offering. I just was traveling into the Wyoming Red Desert and I was taught in the Lakota Sioux tradition to put down tobacco as an offering before ever taking anything. But I also can play my flute as an offering to the earth, which I look forward to teaching you. So I think in a synopsis, that's the point. You know, if you have a med if you've been challenged meditating, this is a great tool. I mean, this is a meditation. You know, you don't have to sit in silence. You can just play your flute and you'll have the same benefits. So that's why we added mindfulness to the list of benefits because we get to turn off the busy thinking mind and fall into the heart and the breath guides us there. Mm, well, you know, speaking of breath, uh, Gary uh, is asking, he's an asthmatic and wondering if he can still play the flute successfully. Uh, can you talk on that, please? Yeah, it's funny because um, the neuro psychoneuroimmunology program I worked with with Dr. Barry Bittman started using recorders for asthmatic children and found it very successful because it's interesting what changes in our brain 
we're basically circuit changing the circuitry of the neural pathways from the default network of fear, which happens with asthma, to the network of expression and experiencing. So I think it's even more important because the flute will give you an experience of breath. And what you're doing is extending the exhale. You're, not, you're taking a deep inhale with the diaphragm and you're extending the exhale. And you know what? I was um, thinking about a, a child I worked with in Iraq in a rehabilitation center and, I, and this child had breathing problems and, and other problems from trauma. And so I just had him laugh in the flute and it sounded like this. I said, that's a song, you know, the laughter song. And it's like every, everything else, you want to just take breaks when you need them. Good question. I love it. That's beautiful. I love the laughter into the flute. That's just beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, we do have time for some more questions, but before we take those, I wanted to share a few details about the flute as sound medicine. So in this six week, or excuse me, in this seven week journey, you'll be guided to become empowered to play the flute for spiritual practice, sound healing, prayer, and connecting to nature, as Christine was just saying, and so much more. The course starts on Tuesday, July 14th at 1 p.m. Pacific. And you'll receive audio and video replays of each session. So you will have these as your resource as you continue to progress throughout uh, the course. Transcripts and any other materials uh, will also be kept on your course homepage for you. And I'd also like to remind you that we do offer a no risk money back guarantee on our courses, giving a full two weeks, in this case until July 28th, to make sure you absolutely love this course. And as an added option, all participants are welcome to connect in a private community group, which we host on Facebook, to stay connected with one another throughout this journey of practice and learning. I want to let you know that everyone who registers for this course, the Flute as Sound Medicine bonus collection, will be a part of that. And it includes in our permanent bonus healing, uh, I want to make sure I have this correctly, healing flute play along compilation, audio compilation from various artists. And it's exclusively curated by Christine featuring award-winning UK composer, James Asher and drum circle master, um, Arthur Hill, Hall, excuse me. And you will also receive the Zen of Flute. It's three play along nature videos from Christine and also a flute handbook. And this flute handbook is a 10 page PDF handbook from Christine Stevens, filled with inspiring qu quotes, deepening practices, and uh, recommended listening suggestions, as well as um, apps to use for creative prompts. So this handbook is organized um, and are, it's an artistic reference guide for you and your sound journey with the flute. And also, as I mentioned in the opening, a $20 off discount on a high spirits flute when you order it using your student discount code. Again, all that's provided uh, when, when you register for the course. So thank you very much for your time on that. I'd love to go to our next question, which is asking, Christine, can you please explain more about the uh, pentatonic scale for healing? Great. Um, one thing I did want to add, Carrie, thanks for detailing the course. Um, one thing that we're committed to is to honor the culture that this flute represents, the Native American culture or First Nations. So I'm very proud that we, together with the Shift Network, are making a donation from this course to the descendants of the earth, very near and dear to my heart. It's my original Teoshpia, my sweat lodge community and Nipi ceremony. And where I was adopted in a making of a relative ceremony, in the Lakota Sioux tradition with Wolf and Lisa, Wopipa. And they are doing ceremonies and they're fighting some deforestation issues. So this financially will benefit the tradition of Native American ceremony. We used to play the flute after the sweat lodge. We'd sit around the fire, the um, 
sacred fire. It's not just a fire, it's a sacred fire. So we would sit around Ochetiwakan is the name in Lakota. And sometimes in that silence and there's no words, I would bring my flute, I'd play, I'd stop. Another person would play their flute, a different key, a different energy. And these incredible compositions would happen to the sound of the crackling fire. So I just want to acknowledge that. And then about your question about what's healing about this scale. Great question. First healing aspect is, I think of it as the raga, the Indian Hindu word for scale, uh, raga of the earth. Because it comes, it's believed to come from the patu bird call. And I'll play you all in the class a recording of that bird call. It sounds like this. Literally, that's the call of the bird. So the scale is connected to earth energy. It's also connected to bird energy, which is important to feel our wings. And upper world, heaven. It's an opening the beloved. The scale is also related to the longing. The origin story of the Lakota flute comes from this, the longing for a beloved. And so the, the young man played it to the woman that he loved in the tribe and she fell in love with him when she heard the music. So there's a scale inside the scale. There's two scales in the pentatonic, the major and minor. So within every flute, you get to hear both. I'll play it on this flute. You get to hear both the minor, or I call it lunar, because I don't like to get into good and bad or sad and happy, right? The lunar scale. And the solar scale, starting on the second note. So, the scale has healing qualities because when you listen to African chants and you listen to so many Native American chants are in this scale because there's no wrong notes, because it's a resonance of the earth. It's a raga. We'll be learning how to sing it and chant it. One of the beautiful songs I always loved was um, Father Earth, wait, Mother Earth, Father Sky, Holy Spirit, who am I? I am all of this and more. I am all of this and more. I think that what's healing to me is the feeling that there's no wrong notes. I mean, how would we live our lives if we use that as a metaphor, that there's no wrong notes? <laughs> I think we'd be a lot happier if we were thinking there weren't any wrong notes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. All right. Well, Pendleton is uh, sharing and asking, I've been playing flute for almost 20 years, and I use it in some of my energy healing, and I'd like to use it more. Uh, will this course be a little bit too basic for where I'm at? Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I think the way we've designed this course in the seven modules, they can benefit a beginner and a more advanced player. Because the principles of learning improvisation, learning intentionality through your flute, and I'm happy to meet you. I also have had a lot of experiences playing the flute for energy healing, mostly in disaster areas and war zones, where I felt that no, nothing else could get in, you know. But there's an opening that happens, and particularly when we get to have Guillermo Martinez and Martina Spino as guest teachers in this course, to bring us the, both the lineage of being flute makers, from Mexica traditions and Toltec traditions, but also learning how to put that energy healing using that barrel, I'm sure you've done this, but directing that into specific places in the field of energy of the person that you're helping. So absolutely, you know, for me, it's like, I think that these principles, when we talk about flute as a spiritual practice, as a medicine, as a sound healing, it's not about advanced playing, it's about how do I embody these tools? How do I remind myself 
of how to connect to lunar and solar energies, of how to play with rhythm without rhythm, of these key aesthetic principles. I'm going to teach you five aesthetic principles that you can bring in and three key ornamentations. So, you know, I think that it's up to you, but I think that the beauty about using it in energy work, I'm really glad you do that. I've been finding more and more yogis who bring it in as savasana. You know, I think that it will all be inspired to be part of something great. We already have, I think, over 500 people signed up and I get this feeling in my body like we're going to step into creating something in the world. We're going to create a field of beauty through this course, through a large group coming together with music, with sound and with silence. Indeed, definitely that connection. Thank you. Leslie is asking, um, I'm planning on using my transverse flute for this course. Uh, would there be any concerns? I no longer have a wood, wooden flute, um, and I haven't played my transverse Bundy in many years, but I've been wanting to. Well, I think that you will feel a real difference in playing the silver flute, you know, the metal versus the wood. That's for sure a big difference. Um, she's talking about transverse. When she says that, she means the cross blow is another way we say this is a straight blow instrument. This, the cross blow is a little more challenging because you need an embouchure. We all practice it by blowing across a uh, soda bottle or a Coke bottle, right? Or a beer bottle, <sighs> that kind of a flute. Um, you would have to translate the scale to the A, C, D, E, G scale from your flute. So I think it's possible. I think it's going to sound different with the metal versus the wood. My preference is to bring people into this earthy, indigenous, ancient stream. Thank you. Mm. Okay, great. Well, that kind of lines up. Carol Sue is asking, she said she just bought an inexpensive plastic recorder. And so again, we're talking about the materials. Um, she's asking if she could use that and to what results. And I also know that I haven't had a chance to look over it, but there are resources that will be provided about making one's own flute. And I don't know what materials you'll be weaving in for that. Yes, you can make a pretty affordable flute with PVC pipe, believe it or not. We found some great resources for that. Um, recorders are great. You're just going to have to tape up a couple of your notes. <laughs> you give me the idea that in the very first Q&A, we'll probably cover if you have a silver flute or a recorder, how to cover those notes. Um, I mean, I also play many different flutes. I have a, a Su Lang flute from Bali that has uh, six holes, but I just keep one of them covered. It doesn't sound the same as the Native American scale, but the idea of getting to that pentatonic scale, which you can do on a recorder, you can do it on a silver flute, I can just send out the notes of that scale, which is basically A, C, D, E, G, and repeating the A octave. So on the recorder, I wish I had, oh, I have one here. Can you give me one second to grab my recorder, Carrie? Of course, absolutely. That's a great question. Um, I do not have it here. Okay, but I do have, I have one upstairs, I don't want to go get it, but I do have a silver penny flute, has six holes. So in this case, I would play B minor. So I think people are going to really love this class. It doesn't matter if you have a, a silver flute or, you know, a recorder, which is a wood flute, you know, um, the scale is what we're going to really be enjoying is tuning into this no wrong notes freedom scale. I like to call it the star scale, the five notes pentatonic. It's very in line with what's happening with humanity's awakening. The gene keys of human designs predicts that the penta, the five person conversation is the most powerful grouping at this time on the planet. I don't know if you've been noticing that, but you start to think about the, you know, the ensembles or the five piece jazz ensemble. There's sort of an interesting thing about five. And in these five notes, so many songs can be played. It's like limiting gives us more. 
there's just so many like metaphysical principles that we're going to discover together as we step into this as a spiritual practice. So thanks. I think you were just saying less is more in some ways in, in this, right? Yeah. Well, Karen is asking, would a pine flute differ from a cedar flute in talking about materials here? Yes, it will sound a little different. I have cedar flutes, which apparently is where the kind of origin of the Native American flute has been made with cedar. Um, that's in its origin story, but I also have here one made with uh, hardwood. I think it's walnut. Um, so why don't I play it for you and you can see the difference. I just want, I want, all these questions are great, but I just want you guys to feel like, just come, you know? Just come be part of it because what flute you play is up to you, but the principles are so universal. And I really want to live in the place of the field of the principles more than the specificity of, you know, what if, how do I transpose from F to A? It doesn't matter. When I say fifth note, everybody's going to know. Five holes, everybody's going to know. Does that make sense? So, but yes, the wood will change a sound. And also this is a little bit lower flute than the A. Um, so yeah, the cedar, I have a hardwood one. I tend to think that aromatic cedar is a little bit brighter and lighter weight and smells good. But I imagine your pine flute smells great. <laughs> and you know, the traditional ones from Bali are made with bamboo and also, the Bansurai flute from India is made with bamboo. A very different mouthpiece. But you can hear the difference in the bamboo versus the cedar versus the pine. We are going to be a forest of flutes. <laughs> I love I that horse. Yeah, forest of flutes. Let's let's write that down. Christine, I'm curious on the ba um, on the bamboo flute you were just playing. It is a different mouthpiece. Is that something that we might be seeing, or is there more of a challenge to that type of mouthpiece? Not than... really. It just comes down to what Martina Spino is going to teach us in the first class. Is that um, countries that were in the Ecuador belt, in the equator belt around the planet had more access to bamboo. And so more of the instruments are made with the materials around them. So I imagine Plains Indians might have been making flutes with juniper or cedar, or I've even seen didgeridoos made with yucca plants in the desert. So it just means the materials. This flute is called the Sulang. The mouthpiece is very different, but it still has the open bowl and the barrel where you blow into it straight blow. But what's beautiful about these flutes is they have the bird. The bird honors the woodpecker that made the holes in the origin story of the flute. And oftentimes flute makers will give a little signature at the bottom, or sometimes this little bottom position of holes is helping tune the instrument. But when you think about this, like this is so wild to me how simple this is and how often the flute is quoted in Sufi lore, Sufi poetry, Kabir. Um, Kabir said, let me be the hole that Christ's breath blows through, you know? So that emptying is what makes the music. That's one of the great metaphors of this class. This is so exciting. I just can't wait to pick up a flute. It's just uh, lovely. Thank you for sharing your enthusiasm. And I have a question for you. And can you share what you're most looking forward to in sharing in this class with those who are going to take the journey with you? I think it's the feeling of during this time of the pandemic, the COVID-19, there's a lot going on with awareness of race relations. I feel like the timing of this to help all of you that want to take the course with me, or even if you don't take the course, I hope today's call has been a call to action for your heart to have that tool of expression, to have that tool of self-tuning in your life. 
I don't know, for me, when I carry the flute and I hike and I play in nature, or I just go out in the morning and greet the day, I've had these really ecstatic experiences where birds have sung back to me, you know, and I just think, wow, I really want to share that. I want to share that. I want to, um, just to use a, a play on words, I want to um, have the infections, infectiousness of the beauty to balance the challenges that we're facing on the planet today and in our personal lives. I mean, we've all been hit with economic challenges and, you know, this is what I like about this flute is it's not a happy, happy, joy, joy song. You know, it, it has this depth of longing pain that comes through because we are in the balance. We live in the, in the dual existence, but we wanna be that focused song that comes through and that's the metaphor of my spiritual practice is to continue to focus into that note and it is said if we can hold a note we can hold our mind thank you i want to thank all of you for joining us in our expo um, exploration of the flute as sound medicine and remind you all that you can visit flute as soundmedicine.com to learn more and to register. And I want to let you know that if you do so by July 10th, midnight July 10th, you'll receive a special thank you bonus, which is he a Healing Flute Compilation. And it's an audio compilation from various artists, again, exclusively curated by Christine Stevens. Uh, very exciting. And I just feel this call to want to just come and join you on your journey, Christine. It's beautiful. I So inspiring. Um, Absolutely. I'd love it if you have any final words for our listeners before we wrap up for today. Well, I thank, I thank you so much, Carrie, and Share Wisdom and Shift Network, because I think it's very revolutionary that Shift Network, which is dedicated to transformation on the planet, is bringing all these sound courses. Um, so I'm just happy to be part of this lineage. I want to honor my teachers, Uncle Manny Eagle Elk Council Pipe Sandoval, and also Connor Sauer, and my teachers from scientific side of me, Barry Bittman, Dr. Michael Tao, when I worked in the entrainment lab. And I think my teachers of the forest, the wind and the pines, the rivers, um, the Nagata Sea of Japan. I mean, I really feel like the flute, all the birds that have taught me, the flute is an instrument that we can learn from the earth. And I think just thank you. I'm in a lot of gratitude. I think my final words to everybody today is going to be a note because uh, I'm finding myself speechless and I can say a lot more with this. Here's what I'd like to say. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Christine. What a joy. What a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. On behalf of all of us here at the Shift Network, I wish you well, and I look forward to having you on this course or one in the future. Much gratitude and thanks.